Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. One of the biggest stories in the last few decades in the auto industry is the Takata airbag scandal. Takata was a company that manufactured airbags for a variety of manufacturers. And the airbags were defective such that occasionally they would just go off for no reason. Or sometimes when they went off, they'd kill people when they shouldn't. And so Takata wound up getting sued to the point where they went out of business. They went bankrupt and their assets got sold off. And there's still a mess to be cleaned up because a lot of vehicles in a road are subject to recall where they need to have the airbags replaced, except that there aren't enough airbags to go around. So while that's all going on, there have been further aftershocks, I guess, from the Takata situation. And Reuters published recently, and this is just insane. It's like this, this, this story is like a zombie. It will not die. It just keeps getting worse and worse. A manufacturer has now found that Takata plants, the plants that were manufacturing Takata seatbelts back in the day, uh, were falsifying test data. So Joyson finds falsified seatbelt test data at former Takata plants. This is from Reuters, like I said, U.S. automotive component maker Joyson Safety Systems, JSS, Japan, said on Friday that it found a 1,000 cases, a 1,000 cases of data falsification in seatbelt tests at two plants it acquired from former airbag maker Takata Corp. So Takata went out and their assets got bought up by other people and Joyson bought some of this stuff And as they're going through the wreckage of what they bought, they've discovered now a thousand cases, not random cases, not scattered cases, not a handful of cases, a thousand cases of data falsification, not mistakes, not Scrivener's errors, data falsification. An investigation began in October of 2020 showed test data on belt webbing, which is used for seat belts and child safety seats, were doctored at plants in Japan and the Philippines. And this was announced by the president of JSS Japan. He told this to reporters. And of course, belt webbing and seat belts and child safety seats, I mean, is that important? (laughs) It's just crazy. The test results, which looked at quality of the webbing, were altered to meet legal and client standards. So again, and this, I'm just... Speaking the obvious here, they don't falsify the results to make it look worse than it is. They falsify the results to make it look better than it is, which means that things are actually not as good as they seem with the webbing in the belts made by Takata. The test results looked at quality of the webbing. They're altered to meet legal and client standards. Uh, The president said that JSS Japan has submitted an investigation report to Japan's transport ministry on Friday. Uh, I suspect that if those seatbelts showed up in America, and I'm suspecting they did, NHTSA is going to want to be looking at this as well. The company is not planning a recall, they said, however, since re-examination of the webbing showed no safety issues. So they've now gone and tested some of the seatbelts. Well, there's no safety issues. And then they pointed out that 12 automakers that the company supplied with this webbing decided not to implement measures such as car inspections. So apparently... JSS has notified 12 different car makers. By the way, uh, some of the webbing in the seatbelts shipped to you guys um, came out of factories where they falsified data to make them look safer than they really are. Just thought you should know. And they say now that 12 manufacturers decided not to implement measures such as car inspections. Now, as part of preventive measures, the company introduced an electronic system in March of this year that would prevent data from being falsified and is working on expanding human resources for quality management. Now, here's the thing. I know some people in my audience don't have computers. Some of you might not have smartphones. I'm not sure how you're watching this, but who knows? But everyone, everyone in my audience understands that an electronic system does not guarantee that this can't happen again. Because somewhere... There's a human inputting data. And if I'm inputting it into an electronic system and I decide to input the wrong data to make my results look better, what's the electronic system going to do? I wouldn't do that, Steve. No, seriously, what's it going to do? You know, I need to see more than just an electronic system. Electronic systems have been around for quite some time. 
Takata's faulty airbag inflators caused the auto industry's biggest safety recall and have been linked to numerous deaths and injuries, mainly in the U.S. The investigation also showed that data had been falsified at one plant over a two-decade period until January 2020, overlapping with when Takata was embroiled in airbag scandals. So apparently, they can see when the data was falsified, and it was falsified during the airbag era, the problem era. So in one building, they've got people running around panicking because the airbags are killing people. And at the other end of the building is people falsifying data on the seatbelt webbing. I mean, <laughs> what's the culture like there that allows that? So the president, I'm sorry, JSS Japan's senior legal official said, in response to the airbag issue, JSS Group as a whole made various efforts, including establishing a code of conduct and enhancing compliance awareness among employees, especially those involved in quality management. He added, unfortunately, investigators pointed out that wasn't enough. And Oh, <laughs> we've established a code of conduct, a code of con- how many places have you been that have codes of conduct? I've been at a wedding reception in a lodge named after an animal, where on the wall was a thing that says, you know, code of conduct. I, I, I've, I've been in a martial arts studio, code of conduct. I, I've, I've, I've seen classrooms, I'm, I'm reasonably certain classrooms, code of conduct. You know, don't pull hair, don't hit each other, be nice, no insulting. You know, sit in your chair and be quiet. Code of conduct, a code of conduct. <laughs> So they established a code of conduct, and then they enhanced compliance awareness. They enhanced compliance awareness, which, by the way, those are all three buzzwords. Those are all three just buzzwords, corporate buzzwords. And I'm assuming that in other countries, they might use a different language for their buzzwords, but in English, those are corporate speak. Those are U.S. American corporate buzzwords. Enhancing compliance awareness. So... They find a guy who's falsifying test data, and they say, uh, these tests we're doing, testing safety, we're doing these to meet safety standards in different countries. And so when you take the test, and you do the test, and you get the results, and you get the numbers, take the number you get and put it here without falsifying it. Got that? Like how do you, How do you enhance awareness of that? Does the person really not know what their job is? And, and, and like I said, the fact that they're always enhancing the numbers to make the results look better, they know what they're doing. They're doing it for a reason. And I know it's terribly obvious to say that, but, but the idea that, well, we've established a code of conduct and we've enhanced compliance awareness. Well, have you taken any action against the people who falsified the reports? Has anybody been fired? Has anybody been sanctioned in any way? Has anybody been written up? Has anything been done about the thousand examples or we're just going to establish a code of conduct and enhance compliance awareness? Because if that's the case, I have no faith in this at all. <laughs> I'm going to go out right now and test my seatbelts. I may have to. So it's, it's a crazy story. And, and you just keep thinking, okay, this has got to be the end of it. This, this has got to be, no, no. I, I, I've, this is the never-ending legal story. This, this one will never stop. This, this, this. We'll be talking about Takata 20 years from now. Somehow, despite the fact they went out of business already, the, the, the wreckage is going to just keep catching fire again or something. I don't know, but it, it just it's amazing to me. So Nathan sent me a story. Thanks a lot. This kind of story just messes with my head. Thanks, Nathan. Joyson finds falsified seatbelt test data at former Takata plants from Reuters. Unbelievable. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. What do you call two crows stuck together? Velcros.